Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to play Dawn of Discovery, otherwise known as Anno 1404. So I had this game sitting downstairs in my basement, so I sort of dusted it out of mothballs and uh, reloaded it. It's been a while since I've played it, but based on what I remember, this is an extremely fun game. Like other Anno games in the series, it's very resource management heavy. Basically, you start off with one island, you grow your town, uh, satisfy your citizens with some basic resources by farming and the like, and then you eventually um, set up warehouses on other islands on the map and then get different types of resources. And then what you can do then is set up trade routes to ferry these resources in between these various islands in order to satisfy your citizens as they continue to grow. As your town grows, their resources and their needs will uh, increase. So they'll start off only needing like food and then they'll need uh, dates and then they'll need this and then they'll need that and then they'll need this. So you're constantly colonizing all of these islands and then shipping these resources back to your town in order to satisfy their needs so that they can pay taxes. I really enjoy these types of games. It's sort of like Caesar. If you've never played any of the Anno games, it's sort of like Caesar, but in Caesar you only have the one map and uh, everything is on like one island. And Dawn of Discovery and, and other Anno games, uh, you'll be doing this across multiple islands. So um, yeah, it's been a while since I've played, so it may take me a little while to get back into this, but um, let's just jump into it and see how it goes. Here's the main menu. Um, you can load a previous save game. You can play a continuous game, which is sort of like a sandbox mode. There's a campaign, scenarios, you can also load a game. Uh, options and player profile. Under options, under sound, you've got language, atmosphere, music, effects, messages, and interface. I have the music turned off for the sake of the commentary and to prevent copyright issues. There's uh, key binds under key assignment, interface, various things like scroll at edge of screen, uh, right click menu, action bar, clouds, help quests, that kind of thing, graphics, bunch of different stuff here, normal mapping, texture quality, water quality, uh, basically ways to increase or decrease quality on various things. General, you've got graphics quality, screen resolution, screen mode, and even though the game was released back in 2009, it does support 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution, which is really cool. So if you buy the game today, even though the game is like six years old at this point, um, you can still play it on a current monitor, which is really cool. Um, you've also got auto save options here, volume controls, and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to go ahead and play a continuous game just to get back into things. You can uh, basically select a preset if you want. There's easy, medium, and hard, and you can also choose previous game settings. I'm gonna go ahead and hit adjust settings on easy game here. You are back! I must inform my sisters immediately! Okay, uh, so yeah, you can set up computer opponents or you can just get rid of them all together. Um, I recommend you do that um, on your first few games just so that you can build without worrying about your opponent colonizing islands that you'd like to colonize yourself but not quick enough to do so because in the very beginning um, there's a learning curve here I gotta say um, unlike the other Anno games at least the ones prior to this game um, you actually have to uh, trade a bit in order to um, get the uh, the seeds that you need in order to colonize the southern part of the map. Um, un in the other Anno games, basically, you could just pick another island, colonize it, and start growing right away. In this game, um, you actually have... Um, two sections, the islands to the north and the islands to the south. And you're able to um, plant and, and, and harvest resources in the north from the start, but uh, later on, uh, the oriental goods, you'll have to get seeds from, I believe, the oriental trader. And if you don't know that going in, if you don't play the campaign and learn about it, it can get a little confusing and you'll be a little lost trying to figure out how you colonize these southern islands and get those resources. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just um, clear up the computer opponents for right now, just so I can commentate and take the game at my own pace while I relearn it all over again. Corsairs is sort of like your pirates. I'm going to go ahead and turn those off as well. Um, Next one is map size. There's small, medium, large, and huge. I'm going to go ahead and put this on small. 
Uh, island size, small, medium, or large. We'll put that on large. Fertilities, few, medium, or many. Island difficulty, easy, medium, or hard. And as you add, um, or as you change these options, difficulty points will be added um, or subtracted appropriately. And you'll see the bar along the bottom here change as a result. Uh, raw materials, a few, medium, or many. Neutral powers, off, medium, or many. Random map where you can create one. Refund of construction costs, off, half, or full. And then there's natural disasters like fire, tornado, plague, sandstorm, thunderstorms. You can turn those on or off. And as you can also adjust the quests. You can turn those off, uh, make them frequent, or just set it on medium here. Start situation. You can start with a warehouse full uh, of stuff, which is uh, definitely recommended for first-time players. Uh, you can also just get a full warehouse, just a warehouse, a flagship, in which case you start off with just a ship. And these uh, first three options, you don't have a choice on what island you start off on. But with the flagship, you actually get to pick where you want to settle. You can also get a flagship with an escort and a flagship with an armada if you want to do that. Um, I think we'll go ahead and just do a flagship for right now. Start honor. I'm going to go ahead and give myself 300 honor. And honor is necessary uh, in order to uh, trade with these other neutral powers that you'll encounter. And again, you'll need the oriental uh, trader to, um, in order to get the seeds that you need to actually start producing resources on the southern islands. Start balance. I'm going to go ahead and do 80,000 gold. Start item. I'll go ahead and pick strong. These are like items that you can uh, start with and collect throughout the game to make ships stronger and the like. Revealed map. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on as well so I can show you around. And basically, I'm just cheating out to Wazoo here. This is not going to be much of a challenge at all. Uh, wealth, I can set uh, various win conditions here. Wealth, number of inhabitants, quests completed, build monument, diplomacy, sink ships, envoys worldwide, noblemen, uh, metropolis quest completed. I'm going to go ahead and put this on 1 million gold, give myself a goal to shoot for, and then I'm going to go ahead and start game. All right, so this is my this start ship. ship symbolizes his majesty the Emperor's trust in you Use it to find a nice little patch of land you can settle Okay. Actually, let me go ahead and this undertake let me turn down the Sound a little bit like the music's off, but the rest of this is pretty loud So I'm gonna turn this down Just so I can commentate a little bit better here. Otherwise, I'll have to keep pausing <laughs> So let's go ahead and do that. King won't be easy, but knowing you, you'll do all you can to complete it successfully. Okay, so here's my ship, and uh, again, had I picked like warehouse or something, I would have started probably somewhere on this island or possibly this island over here, whatever. And these different islands have different resources. Like if you look on the very top, you'll see uninhabited island. There's uh, cider here, hemp, and customizable resources. You can plant an additional fertility, fertility on this island. The seeds for this will be available in the free harbors of both the Occident and the Orient. The Occident are the islands to the north and the Orient um, basically uh, have resources for the south. Speaking of which, uh, you can see the mini-map in the bottom left-hand corner, and you can see some of these are like desert, the ones on the bottom here, and then the ones in the north are like, sort of like foresty, green, you know. And they each have different resources, and this, this one here has uh, cider, hemp, and grain. Uh, this one here has cider, grapes, and bees. This one over here has grain and herbs. And then in the south, you've got um, dates, spices, and clay. This one has silk, indigo, and almonds. So basically, you, you pick a starting island, you settle on it, you uh, start growing your town. And eventually, you're going to want to set up warehouses on these various islands so that you can ship those resources back to your main settlement. So basically, it's a good idea to pick one 
island as your, you know, sort of like your town. Uh, you know, pick a place where you're going to grow your town. That way you don't have houses here and houses over here and houses down here. And they all require all of these different resources. You're going to have ships going all over the place. So what I like to do is I like to pick one map one, or one big island um, as my town uh, island and just do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, send my ship down here. Like so. I could have settled there, I suppose. But this this has a little bit more space to it. Upper left-hand corner is your treasury. You can see your current gold coins as long, along with your uh, income. It'll sort of sum it up there for you. Honor. Again, you'll be using that to trade. Um, so tell me, how are things with you? I thought I turned down the sound. Anyway, um... If, if you'll take a look on the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see there's a little honor symbol here with a little number next. So basically, honor is like another resource besides money. Uh, you can spend it on uh, special stuff or special items like this improved sail cloth. You can equip it to your ship. Um, there's cider seeds, which can be used to, um, from the seed, a mighty tree grows. And then, like, if I were to get that, if I were to buy that, then bring it over to this, this uninhabited island here... I could add uh, cider to it, although there's already cider at this location, so I wouldn't want to do that. But you get the idea. Um, let's go ahead and uh, settle here. We'll build a warehouse. There's a little build warehouse button here. You need uh, some basic uh, material in order to do that. There's wood and uh, tools. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that here. And that... Um, that white outline is the area that it encompasses. Opportunities have been expanded. All right, so my warehouse is now set up. And I will go through resources pretty quickly. So what I want to do is start building. On the left-hand side, you can see some messages like new construction options. You can see the winning conditions. You can see on the very bottom left here your balance. I have negative 10 gold coins now because – or that, that's my income rate. And because I have this warehouse and your buildings that you put down do have a maintenance cost associated with them. Zero is my population right now. I have no one available. Um, on the uh, bottom right-hand corner is sort of like your construction menu and uh, demolish mode, diplomacy, routing, um, central menu in case you want to bring up – uh, an options menu, for example. So you can bring that up if you want. But I'm going to click on this flashing one. It's the construction menu. And then you have different... Forgive me, but I am not permitted to admit foreigners to the mysteries of oriental architecture. I could have sworn I turned that down. Did I not turn this down? Language. Okay, maybe that's... Maybe the language is the... Okay. There we go. That might be better. Okay. So getting back to this uh, construction menu, there's different tabs here. Uh, peasants, you'll start off with like the very basic, basic stuff. Like you can build a marketplace, a small market building, which is what this uh, small warehouse is, I believe. Uh, roads, which we will need. Things will not function without road access. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Bring that up like that. And I could um, expand past this uh, area. Like, I can't build roads past that, that outline here. But if I want to increase my reach, I could put, say, a warehouse over here. And then that will increase my, uh, my sphere of influence, so to speak. So I could put that here. Um, there's also this market – or this um, – yeah, marketplace. I can throw this down. This is where uh, people need to be next to in order uh, to move in via housing. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that here. It's nice and centralized, I think. All right. And then I'm going to build more roads leading up to it. There we go. And let's go ahead and put some roads down. Okay, and then now we have the um, ability to put down peasant houses. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And you can see that whenever you have a building within a range of another one, you can see it highlighting green. Like this house is in range of this marketplace, so it's going to turn green. If I were to like bring it out here, even though I can't build over here, if I were to at some point later in the game, it would not be within range of that marketplace. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that here for right now, just get some housing put down. May not be the best in terms of layout. Maybe we'll put some housing here. Like that. And then maybe we'll throw a road across just to even this out. Although there's some wasted space there. 
I, I know I didn't like that. Oh well. Um, so that that's good for right now. But if you um, click on these houses, let's go ahead and get out of this menu. Um, if you look in the upper right hand corner, you can see a slider here and basically this is their tax load. Whenever it's on um, various colors, different things will happen. So, um, and if they're very satisfied, you'll see the uh, tolerance, uh, you'll see the green move up to the right. Um, so basically what you're going to want to do is um, try and satisfy their needs as much as possible so that the green starts filling this up and then you can adjust the tax rate further to the right without them getting pissed off. I'll have to show you what I mean as I as I get to that part. Right now uh, the need for food is very satisfied, very uh, well satisfied and the need for company is satisfied. Um, they need drink and they need faith but I need uh, 60 peasants in order to unlock that and then I need 90 peasants in order to unlock faith. All right, what else can I build? I can build a fisherman's hut for a steady supply of food. Um, so I could do something like this, maybe. Although, do I need fish nearby in order to do that? I don't remember. Again, it's been a uh, year since I've played this. Let's just throw this down here and see if it actually works. We'll find out in a minute. Okay, I clicked on the fisherman's hut, and you can actually see here uh, current productivity 100%, which means that um, you know if it if it is working, which it is, it'll um, you know start producing. So I you know I don't need a fish icon or anything like that. It's just going to start collecting fish, and then because there's a warehouse in range, it'll. Um, roads? Are the people just going to trudge through the dirt? All right, all right. I forgot to build roads next to these over here do that and then we also need roads here there we go happy now okay yes now it'll be easy to find the right route glad I could help so yeah um, now that there's a fisherman's hut here um, the resources will be dropped off to this small warehouse here and as you add more of these warehouses your maximum stock can increase like you can only store so much of a particular good and you'll see this little green bar fill up as a result and then whenever, whenever it's full you just can't store anymore but if you build more warehouses or if you upgrade them yes you can upgrade warehouses in this game um, then you know you can obviously hold more stuff are the peasants leaving the city you should immediately find out what prompted this move alright uh, let's go ahead and get a lumberjack hut so we can start uh, getting some uh, lumber um, I guess we'll throw that, I guess maybe we'll throw that over here, okay, and we need a road going to it, there we go, and because I'm surrounded by trees on all sides, you know, it's 100% productivity, how'd I put this out, I don't know, if there's a place without trees, then, you know, this wouldn't work very well. If I also put other buildings next to this, then um, it won't produce as much as it could. So I want to be careful regarding buildings like this that require some space to work. Um, trees, fisherman hut, peasant house. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Tax load. Regulates the population's tax load and influence their level of satisfaction. Okay. So if I have it on, uh, if I put the slider on Euphoria, or Euphoria rather, um, if I like drag it to the left, they'll be extremely happy. Um, and they can, and only these uh, Euphoria levels can, will the peasants actually move or upgrade their residents to the next level, assuming they have the uh, needs filled. Um, but if you have it on like this light green here, happy peasants will move into the building until it is full. If you have it on yellow, then uh, content peasants will neither move in or leave. If you have it on orange, disgruntled peasants will move out of this building until only a few are left. If you have it on red, angry peasants will move out of the building until their anger subsides or the building has become derelict. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on, say, uh, I guess light green for right now. That way they'll move in. 
They won't upgrade because I don't have it on this dark green Euphoria or Euphoria. I keep having a difficult time saying that word. Euphoria. There we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just I just got off a 10-hour shift at work. You'll have to forgive me. All right. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to leave it on light green for right now so work that they continue to move in. Much easier. And as they move in, um, my tax income will go up. Now, whether or not I actually have a positive balance is a different story. I have plus one gold coins right now. That's good. So I am making a small profit off that. But as you, I mean, you can just add a whole bunch of houses, sure, but you have to be careful that, you know, the more houses you build, um, the more people that move in and the more supplies that you need, the more resources you need in order to satisfy your people. You'll go through fish a lot faster um, with, you know, say, 50 colonists as opposed to 10. So as you build more houses to increase your income, you'll also have to build more of these uh, various buildings in order to satisfy your resource uh, needs. So yeah, there's a lumberjack hut there. Alright, now there's a ship here. That's my ship. And, yeah, I start off with a high-grade replacement cell. Reduces the effects of damage and cargo on a ship's speed. The win is fair. Okay. So, yeah, I can, um, I think what I was trying to do earlier was explain How this. You can click on these neutral uh, towns here, and you can use your honor to buy various things. You can also um, buy tools or you wood. More buildings available. Oh, nice. So after so many people move in to your uh, town, you'll unlock more options. That's basically how you unlock... Uh, more stuff. The the bigger your settlement, bigger your town, the more stuff you unlock. Now I have the ability to um, create cider farms. Luckily, this island here um, allows me to cultivate cider. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that right now. I don't know, maybe, oh, I need a warehouse somewhere else. Maybe we'll put that, we'll put that, let me over here. And then we'll get a road. Was that a lumber? Oh, crap. Oh, that was a house that I just put down. That's not what I wanted. Demolish. Um, what was it? A, oh, peasant. Yeah, I, there we go. Small market. There we go. I was wondering why the, uh, why the radial, or this, uh, this area wasn't, you know, coming up here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this, say, here. Might be a good spot. And we'll put a road... Say, like, right here. Alright, now I can build within range of this. So I could put maybe this over here, like so. There we go. And some of these structures, like I said, require some room around them. In this case, you actually need to build orchards in order for this to work. Um, nope, save game. There's an auto save feature. Game save. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, there's a little button here. If you need anything, you can always come and see me. I uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, there's this create fields button, which basically allows you to throw these fields down. And um, I'm gonna put down four. There we go. That's the maximum I can put down. And now that that's there, um, production will soon start. So I just need to wait now. Alright, looks like I may need more wood at some point, so maybe I will need to um, create another one of these lumberjack huts. It's one big resource management game, it's all it is. Although there is some, you know, military uh, stuff you have to worry like if you're playing with other AI opponents or whatnot, you will have to worry about them invading you, and diplomacy... Speaking of diplomacy, maybe I can show you that window real quick, even though there's no one to really look at. There we go. There's another one of those. They'll start producing lumber as well. Um, yeah, there is a diplomacy window in the bottom right-hand corner, and there are some neutral towns, like I was telling you, like Lord Richard Northburg and Grand Vizier Al Zahir. These are the people I want to trade with in order to... Like, especially right. him. He has all of the... Uh, the seeds I need in order to cultivate resources on these southern islands here. So at some point I'm going to want to visit him with my ship, use my honor that I'm collecting in order to, and here he is, 
I don't often receive so this this date seed for example 50 honor so I could um, spend honor there to get this date seed then I can find an island that supports dates and then uh, start cultivating that resource which is pretty you know pretty cool uh, routing eventually uh, you'll get this is sort of like your map and instead of having to trade manually by bringing your ship right clicking it to your island loading stuff uh, from your warehouse onto your ship then right clicking back I mean you could do it that way but you can set up some auto routes here which is really cool so if I have another route I can hit create new route add warehouse we'll do Kingsport and then you can select a good like let's say I want to pick up this wood or whatever and then um, at another warehouse uh, we'll pick mine and then subtract wood so basically I'm telling this ship to go to Kingsport buy 40 wood go back to Goldford which is where I am uh, which is where my town is and then um, I'm subtracting 40 from my ship onto this warehouse so basically I'm, I'm buying it uh, from the neutral AI player there bringing it back to my town and then unloading it so I can use its resource and I can add ships down here so it's sort of like um, yeah I mean it's 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 sort of like Caesar again but um, this is sort of like a grander scale I think and Grand Ages Medieval if you've ever played like any of the patrician games or the more recent Grand Ages Medieval um, it's sort of like you know that where you can set up trade routes okay so back to this what was I doing I think I need to create more more housing here alright so now I'm satisfying my need for drink which is good it's filling up because I have this cider farm now and as a result um, now you'll notice that this dark green bar is actually moving to the right that's what I was trying to explain earlier as you satisfy more of their requirements this green bar will continue moving to the right and this means that you can drag this slider it, it moves automatically for you but you can move this slider further to the right and charge them more and get more money so basically the happier you you make them the more money you can charge or the more taxes you can charge as you start to satisfy less and if you don't satisfy anything at all this red will end up moving to the left and you'll be forced to reduce your slider over to the left uh, and thereby reducing your taxes and uh, in order to keep them happy so yes yeah, it's, it's a delicate balance it's continuing to move to the right which is good last but not least I have to build faith or get a faith building but I don't have that ability yet I need to move in more people so I'm gonna go ahead and get um, some more housing new buildings are ready to be oh, there built. we go it appears that you take good care of your population all right so I was just awarded 50 honor from that Lord guy um, yeah you'll be earning honor throughout the game so it's not like the honor that you start with is it uh, you you will earn honor there's quests that you can do uh, sometimes you'll earn honor there I'm gonna go ahead and throw down this actually I can't put the chapel down yet I don't have enough wood for that so I think what I need to do is look at my lumber production and see what's what the problem is I think I'm producing it I just I just spent a whole bunch of lumber building these houses so peasants are moving in. I just need to wait a little bit of time. I can also hold in the plus key, by the way, on the number pad in order to advance time a bit. As soon as I let go, it'll go back to normal. All right, I have 12 lumber now. I wonder if I can build it. Yes, okay, satisfies the needs for faith. Now you'll notice that um, this thing has a radius as well. So it's important to um, put your buildings down in such a way to where, you know, all of your buildings will be covered. Covered. Otherwise, like if I put my church out here, then I'll need another church over here to take care of these houses over here on, on the top. So you sort of have to, you know, maneuver things around a bit, plan ahead, figure out where you're going to want to put stuff. I mean, there's going to be a point where you're going to have to create more than one of a particular building as your town grows, but, yeah. So I'm going to throw this here. That satisfies all of the houses. 
So now their need for faith is now satisfied. And as a result, this uh, dark green bar should continue moving to the right. And if it's not, then, well, I think I'm, I'm, I've reached my maximum. Yeah, very well satisfied. So I don't, I, this may not even move anymore. But yeah, I can, uh, in order for me to upgrade to the next uh, level, and this is just the first level, mind you. This isn't like... This, is, this isn't this is as far as I can go. I can upgrade these houses, like, I think a total of three times. Um, and to do that, I want to put this on this dark green here. There we go. And while that charges them less taxes, um, it will allow them to level up. Again, only the euphoric peasants can advance to the next civilization level. Also living in your city. There we go. House has advanced to the next level. So now these guys... Um, advanced and that you take good care of all right shut up shut up i i'm well aware of this thank you i got another hundred honor for uh this advancement but now i've got two different types i've got these peasants that are living here and now i've got citizens and the citizens are the next type and as you can see um they require food they require company um drink and faith but now they also require clothing and amusement. So as these uh, houses level up, uh, they'll require more and more resources. They gotta need more food because this uh, this isn't very satisfied here. Um, oh, actually, uh, the reason it's not satisfied is because I don't have spices. Um, as you level up your housing, they require multiple uh, items under one category. Whereas these guys were content with just fish. I can find, here we go. This peasant here was fine with just fish, okay? But now that this one has leveled up to a citizen house, it requires fish and spices. And spices can only be obtained in the south. So now I need to see about talking to, um, what's his face down here? Uh, da, 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 da. What brings you to foreign lands? I can like get date seeds. I do believe I need to buy spices as well. You have access to all the goods available to this level. Okay. Planks, clay seeds, silk. Okay, so I can't buy those yet. Attainments, okay. So I can also spend honor on, these are sort of like upgrades. Um, for example, uh, the Emperor's Trade Edict, uh, level 0 out of 3. Lord Northburg is offering citizen goods at his warehouse. So in order to get some of the uh, next level resources available to you to buy, you actually have to spend some honor to do it, uh, you know, to do that by unlocking it here. Um, let's go ahead, click on him. And then I want to click on Extended Trade Treaty, which, um, let's see, what's the difference? Now offering, that's weird. Oh, citizen goods and items. I think I want goods. Items, I believe, are those special things you can equip to buff your ship in some way. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Extended Trade Treaty here. Click on that. Spend 50 honor to do that. Now if I click I on them, often receive visitors from there we go. I've unlocked this. Now I have the ability to buy um, milk. There's silk here. And there's dates. Still no spices, though. I wonder what the deal is with that. I might have to get those later. Either that, or maybe I can get spices from uh, North Nordberg, or whatever his name is. I keep butchering his name. Let me come up... Uh, do, 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 do. Luckily, I have a bunch of honors. So it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and come up this way. It's always a pleasure see if spices see are offered. Uh, cider. Splendid gift for... Guest, uh, let's click on this. Ropes, stone, coal, custom goods, linen garments, hemp seeds, noble appreciation. So I'm not exactly sure where the seeds are um, for spices, unless I just need to buy the dates and maybe the spices are free. I don't think the spices are free. I think I do need the seeds for that. But maybe these. Uh, I, I, again, it's been a while since I've played, but it's very possible that these things will rotate on a regular basis. So some items will be available now. Maybe in the future, some different things will be available. I'm going to go ahead and spend more honor. 
on uh, this guy here and click on uh, offering citizen goods. So I'm going to click on that. Now I can buy some goods, citizen goods from that here. Items enlarges the or Occidental Trading Fleet. Ships in the fleet plus one, budget plus 500 gold per. See, um, the AI here also has ships of his own. So you can set your warehouses up here to automatically buy stuff from the neutral AI as they come around. So you don't have to bring your ship up to their port to buy something. Um, if you... Everyone at court is relying on your skills in this. All right. If you set it up so that you, you know, you want something, um, you know, you can set it up that way and then the neutral AI will deliver it to your town on a regular basis. Uh, okay, quest. Sink one trading ship and take the proof of Lord. Okay, so I don't even know if my ship has weapons. Does my ship have any weapons? The Santa Maria. I believe I do. Alright, we'll go ahead and accept it. I have, okay, so it looks like it's over here. So let's head uh, in this direction. Do not underestimate the importance of this quest. Rope, stone, coal. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to see about getting seeds at some point. Because what I'm going to want to do is set up a warehouse somewhere. Okay, there's spices on this island. So I could set up a warehouse down here. I can, uh, you know, get spices uh, cultivated. And then I can ship them via boat uh, up to this warehouse here. Which in turn will be delivered to these houses up here. And then that will satisfy their particular need for that resource but I also need clothing um, I don't know if I can satisfy that now or not let's see village fountain let's click on the next tab over okay so there's hemp weavers hut uh, requires hemp so yes this this particular um, town where's my ship at I'm getting distracted sorry this particular island here does allow me to cultivate hemp, so I could create some hemp farms or plantations and then a weaver's hut and then get clothes that way. But I'm, I'm trying to find my ship. I'm looking on my mini-map. For some reason I can't... Oh, there it is. It's a little yellow dot. Alright, so eventually he'll get there. Alright, so in the meantime, let's go ahead and get some hemp farms set up. We'll go ahead and do, um, maybe over here. There we go. And we're going to want this road. And you can upgrade your roads. You've got these carts. Uh, these warehouses uh, not only store resources, but, uh, or these, mo these markets not only uh, store resources, but they also spawn these carts. The more you upgrade a market here, the more carts that spawn. So it's a good idea not only to uh, upgrade to increase your storage space, but also to um, increase the number of carts going to and from. Okay, we need more these. Do that, that. There we go. Auto save. Give me a minute. Game save. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so there we go. So now there's a hemp farm. And now I can go ahead and start work on a weaver's hut. I want to put that in range of this hemp farm. I want to put this over here because if I put another hemp farm down, I want it to be in range of it. So again, uh, placement is key in this game. You want to make sure all of the appropriate buildings are next to each other. See, if I were to put this weaver's hut over here to the right then I'd if I were to put a second hemp farm down I'd have to put it somewhere near it if I put it out here it would not be close enough to it um, I the hemp could be stored in the warehouse or in the market but it's unnecessary to do that when you know you can put them next to each other and bypass this market altogether all right down here um, looks like I'm catching up finally So yeah, there is combat in this game. Speaking of combat, uh, you can build troops in this game. Uh, you can invade your AI opponents, attack them. You can uh, build like uh, stronger ships on the sea. Again, troops, walls. 
there's definitely more tabs here that you're not seeing that aren't uh, unlocked yet. But yeah, um, just to show you a few things that you can eventually get to on this particular citizen's level. Harbor, defense tower, large statue, carpenter's house, fire station, torment arena, tavern, repair crane, small storehouse, quay wall, harbor master's office, fountain, charcoal burner's hut, iron smelter, tool maker, workshop, rope yard, small shipyard, cobblestone street. You can basically upgrade uh, existing streets and uh, like you you can build these very basic ones under the peasants tab but your carts don't move as fast whenever you build an upgraded street um, it'll basically increase the speed of like market carts and medics firefighters that kind of thing all right so we sinking this ship yet did I get it oh there it is let's go ahead and pick this up Must be presented to Lord Northburg as proof to complete the quest Warmonger. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that up now. Alright, it is now in my inventory on the bottom right. So now I'm going to head back up here. Get within range to trade. That this would be in the Emperor's interest too. I am already working on it there, Chief. You settle down. Appreciate it. Okay, so um, honestly, I think I'm going to end the video here. I've probably prattled on long enough. I have to say, I, I, again, I really enjoy this game. It's not for everybody, i got to say. Uh, for those of you that hate resource management, this game is not for you. If you love resource management, if you like playing Caesar, um, if you like playing Patrician, yeah, I'll, I'll say that, um, and any of the other Anno games in the series, um, I think you'll like this one too. Very resource management heavy. Um, and managing multiple islands it can get a pretty uh, can get pretty micro intensive if you're not someone that likes micromanagement um and and granted you can automate ship routes and trade routes and the like but there's still a little bit of micromanagement involved especially during the late game when you've got troops to worry about you've got like maybe five islands under your control that you have to worry about because you're you know you've got all these resources you're trying to bring them to one city or possibly even two because later down the line, you can actually put housing on these southern islands here. So you can do that as well. And you'll have two separate resource, or two separate uh, housing population uh, numbers to worry about. Like you'll have your main town up here that you started with, but eventually you'll have your own separate town down here in the south. It has its own separate population counter. It has its own set of buildings that you can build next to it, just like up here. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do in this game. And for $10, I don't, I don't have the game on Steam to know if that Steam version works. I have the disc version. Um, and you have to, uh, I think, use UB Play or whatever it's called. Uplay. Um, where, uh, you know, you sort of have to... It's sort of like... It's like DRM, sort of. And, and some people hate Uplay. Um... But I don't mind it. I mean, the games I have that are Ubisoft related do work for me. Which is, I guess, lucky because other people have reported the contrary. But yeah, let's just go ahead and quickly turn this in and then we'll go ahead and end the video. Uh, if you guys want to see more gameplay, uh, let me know. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube you channel. Alright, so I earned some gold. I got some honor. Okay, but yeah, if you guys uh, want to see more, let me know. If you haven't already, subscribed to my YouTube channel and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.